Hello, I'm Dr. Ian Coxon from the Experience Based Designing Centre at the University of Southern Denmark. Today we're doing the third of a series of videos on human experience. The first one we did was about experience and what it basically is and how we can understand that. The second was the TOE or the taxonomy of experience. This is a structural way of understanding experience. What are its main components and so forth. And today we're looking at the seeing process, a way of seeing within what we've gathered and how we can understand the meaning and the meaning structures within that experience. So we will be doing a nine step process, it's a rather long process in a way, but we, we need to be able to get to deep layers of meaning. Now we do this methodically, we're applying hermeneutic phenomenology as the underlying philosophy and theories behind these processes, but we do nine fairly logical processes, you don't have to understand the philosophy to be able to do this, but you can, you can apply these step by step processes to understand and uncover the deep meaning layers within this experience. We're going to work with students in the classroom on an experience that they've had, and we don't know what that is just yet, but let's, let's see where that goes. And we're going to deeply explore that experience to see if we can understand its deeper layers of meaning. Let's go to the classroom and see what happens. So, the nine step seeing process. We're going to go through this today, and the key aspect of the seeing process is it's a way of seeing within an experience a phenomenon that we want to understand. How do we see within it? How can we see what can be seen? So this is the whole process here, is about this seeing within an experience and trying to mine what the meaning, particularly meaning, and this will become relevant in a minute, about how do we mine the meaning that is within a particular experience that we want to understand. So, <clears throat> what is the experience that we want to understand? What about a drinking? <laughs> okay, we have an experience, a drinking experience. Uh, who's had an interesting drinking experience recently? Very recently. Okay, what is yours? Uh, we went to Munich to the Oktoberfest. Ah, the Oktoberfest. Yeah. And? What was, when was that? How long ago uh, was that? It was uh, actually in the end of September, right. last week of September. Okay. Big, lots of people there. Uh, it's Really Massive. Good. And it's the whole essence of it is, is actually just drinking beer. The essence of the experience. Yeah. So, uh, and, and would you go from tent to tent and uh, you move around a lot or um, what's that? No, usually you stick to the same tent. You get there like six or seven in the morning uh, right. and, and get a, into a tent and sit at the same bed for the whole day because there's too many people to get seated anywhere else. And um, did you go with other people? Yeah. Yeah. And what was it like? Uh, it was really good. Actually, one of the funny thing is that before you get the beer served, you don't really have anything in common with everybody else. But at the at the exact moment where the beer is placed on the table, mm -hmm. everybody feels united in some kind of way, and, and suddenly you start speaking to everybody. Okay. okay. Just see if you can say that again. Should I repeat it? Or? Yeah. Okay. Uh, before beer is served, uh, we don't have anything uh, in common with everybody else in the tent. At the moment they actually serve the beer, we feel like we all have something in common. And we start keep, uh, talking. <laughs> Hang on a minute. <laughs> before the beer is served, you don't have anything in common with the others that you're sitting with, so, did you say? Yeah, with, and with everybody else. In with, the ah. We've just done an interview. We've just done an interview and we've uh, talked to somebody who has had an experience which I guess not all of us have had. We've not all had the experience of Munich uh, Beer Festival, uh, Oktoberfest. The beer Fest, what do you call it? Oktoberfest. How many people have been there? to Oktoberfest. I was with him. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you guys will be key players in this, in this interaction, but who has ever had a beer? Okay, I won't ask those people who haven't had a beer <laughs> or why. So you can, you can say you are experienced beer drinkers to some degree. You have had the experience of uh, drinking, let's say drinking, 
a beer with friends. Let's say it could be drinking a beer in public with friends or private with friends or something like this. But let's say it's just generally we want to understand the experience of we could we could have said the experience of Oktoberfest, drinking beer at Oktoberfest, which would probably be more accurate. But we want more people to be involved or have some input on this kind of experience. Why would we have people who have experience in this helping us to analyse this, do you think? Does this relate to or remind you of anything like an embodiment? This is, you, you are now informed, you have some inf information on which to base your experiences. If you are, if I, you were trying to study the experience of Oktoberfest, you would need to go to Oktoberfest and embody the experience of that so that you could deeply un understand what the experience would be. So over here in steps one, two and three, which you're kind of familiar with, finding a way into understanding this experience is important and your embodiment of that experience is important so that you have an embodied understanding of what that is like. You gather information, you might have videotaped or recorded it, you might keep a souvenir glass, uh, you might still have the, the clothes that you had with you and they smell of smoke or beer or other fluids. Um, and, <laughs> and you have prepared the information, a video, pho photographs, uh, transcripts or whatever. So you'll have documentation of all of this, these steps one, two and three, which you're kind of familiar with from the earlier projects. And you, you, have, a, uh, you have interviewed somebody perhaps and this would be a part of the transcript. Now we start the process of trying to understand what does it mean. We want to see within it what does it mean. So let's begin. This is where you have to then become active and the people who have actually done this will be the people who have embodied the experience and can help us most with it. But anyone who's had a beer can perhaps suggest some meaning. So let's start with before the beer is served you don't have anything in common with everyone else. What could that mean? Deathly silence. Do beer connect people? Pardon? The beer connects people. Okay. Beer connects people. Yep. Maybe strangers. Can we say that? Would that be yeah? People who didn't know each other before. We're only looking at um, in common with everyone else in the tent. We'll look at that part first. So we're still looking at this first sentence here. Before the beer is served, you don't know, don't have anything in common with everyone else in the tent. What can that mean? What is a, me a meaning that we can pull out from that? There is a moment there's no beer served. Ah. A moment before the beer What about it? I'm going to say an, of anticipation. Now I'm prompting you here a little bit because I want to get you into the, the groove here of, of how we're looking at this. There's a moment before the beer is served where there's an anticipation. We're waiting for the beer. Yeah. Okay, let's start getting micro. Before the, before the beer is served, is served. Does served mean anything? Pardon? Beer has to be ordered. Okay. Uh, an order needs to be placed. Yep. I'll, show, I'll prompt you again. The beer is served. There, there are other people that help helps you uh, connect with strangers. Uh, yeah. They provide a, the medium for a, the service is uh, helping us to connect. Is that okay? Sure. <laughs> you want else get any ideas? Service. Um, I am special. Be 
because someone serves me. Someone is acting in a subservient kind of way. We can say that all of those words are, can be taken literally or they can be taken uh, to what they mean. So what they say and what they mean. Two different directions. So you can look at all of that and say that at least it says two different things. So before the beer is served, you don't have anything in common with anyone else in the tent, is the words that said. But what does that overall mean? Overall, the meaning behind that. I'll just say, we are everyone, all in this together. So there's a sense of community or place, we're all together or we're all sharing something. Uh, before the beer is served, you. What about you, which actually means me? So, but he's talking, he's talking about you generally, collectively. Before the beer is served, you, or, you know, like I'm speaking for everybody, don't have anything in common. So there's a sense of we're together. Did we say that already? We are in this together? Yep, sorry. So the, so the you collectively refers to that as well. Have anything in common? So, ah, you don't, you don't have anything in common. So at a point, uh, having something in common is important. to, I don't know, sharing, beer. Would that be true? Am I making that up? Is that a possible meaning? I haven't even got to this part yet. I'm running out of space. The, I'll do a couple. The, the minute the beer is served, you have something in common and start talking. So we're all in this together. Having a beer is something important. Is, is, is kind of there. The minute the beer is served, we talked about served, you have something in common and start talking. So beer and talking. Beer makes us talk. Beer makes us talk. <laughs> does but what's meaningful let's say we take that as a piece of text beer makes us talk but what does that mean so that's what it says what does it mean what does beer talk isn't it nice yes it yeah. enhances our social life yeah beer makes us talk beer Let's talk about enhances, enhances our social life. Maybe take it a little bit further, enhances our social life. In what way? This is hard work, isn't it? So you communicate. Beer helps us, us communicate maybe. Better. Let's say that, okay? This helps us, yeah. beer helps us communicate better. I wish I had a beer right now. That would be nice. It yeah? enhances your feeling of comfort. Of comfort? Of com yeah, you feel more comfortable in a given situation. Uh, or maybe, maybe it breaks your uh, normal comfort zone. More like it widens it out. Yeah, it widens it out. Yeah. <coughs> Maybe it uh, breaks some barriers. Yeah. Okay, it makes you feel more comfortable. In a bigger group? On a chair? No. In, in a group. In a group. Okay. In a group, let's say, of friends. 
and strangers. Let's say. Okay. We've done one couple of sentences. We could have just done the one and, and teased out. What have we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, nine, and ten. Okay. So out of a couple of sentences, we've got ten meanings. Uh, I think we, with, if we got into a bit of a groove and a bit of a flow on this, we could really pull that apart. And you can get down to every word, with. With means together with somebody. Uh, else means someone, someone else, a, diff a separation. Is there something meaning around separation, someone else? So you can look at each word in the tent, look in the tent space. What is the tent meaning, the meaning of the tent space? It's this sort of igloo, this uh, cocoon, where we are all in together. We're not outside in the, in the cold weather, we're in a warm space and so forth. So there's a meaning even in the word tent. So we can go through every word here and really pull this apart. Maybe we could get to 20 meanings or so within this couple of sentences. And that's our goal. That's our starting point. That's why step four is the most important step in the whole process. It is very, very different to a normal, if you like, a normal qualitative uh, reductive uh, analysis process. In normal textual uh, analysis and qualitative research, it's a reductive process. You take what you have in terms of transcripts and text and so forth and you start to categorize and reduce it. With this process, in this way, we expand it, we induct it. We expand what we have almost tenfold. And so our universe of material, of, our, of, of data, becomes exploded. And you'll see in the TOE sheets that you, uh, sorry, the seeing sheets that you have later, that the universe of data in this particular column of a worksheet that we work with is enormous. But it's vitally important that we move away from text, what is said, to what is meant. So now we're talking about working with meaning and not working with text and word. Discourse analysis is around the number of times that beer is mentioned or others are mentioned and so forth and that is then interpreted again. This is meaning analysis. So this is a vitally important, very tedious and time consuming um, and difficult step because it really requires you to look at the text very, very deeply and ask yourself, what does it mean? What could it mean? What are the possible meanings? Not fantasy, there's, there's not, it's not about fantasy, it's not about could be's, maybes and so forth. This is about what you, as an expert beer drinking experiencer, able to deduce in terms of meaning from this text. So we're using the text to explode it. Um, harping on that a little bit because this is the most important st stage. From here on, then we reduce. We start to reduce, but we're reducing meaning. So, it's important now we move to step five. Step five is determining what is, amongst these things, is important. So how will we determine what's important? Important to who? Or whom? Important to me? Or important to the person who was in the experience itself? How do we determine? What is, what is the criteria for determining? What is, it, what is important? You have to ask yourself, what are we, what are we here for? What are we trying to do? What, what are we trying to see? Yeah. I'm trying to understand the experience. So. Perfect. Yeah. That was not cued. <laughs> Perfect. We're trying to understand the experience of drinking beer with friends. So what's important to that? Not to me, not to anyone else, but to that, to our understanding of that. So, we are all in this together. Is that important to the understanding of drinking beer with friends? Your vote. You're the experts, remember? Yes? Yep, so that one's in. Beer connects uh, people and, or strangers. Is that important to the experience of being a drinking beer with friends? Sorry? Okay, let's say. Let's say, let's say it's a maybe. Yeah. I've got a no, I've got a yes, I've got a maybe. I'll say yes because this, this 
strangers could become your friends. Okay. Are we, which way are we going to go? Yes or no? No. No? No. <laughs> All right. I'll go, I'll go neutral. <laughs> I'll split the difference between a yes and a no. Beer makes us talk. Is that important to drinking beer with friends? Yes. Yes. Oh, that's a big resounding yes. A moment, a moment before the beer, there's this in, uh, moment of anticipation. Before the beer arrives, so you've been at the pub or you've been at the, you've, in this case, you've been to uh, the Oktoberfest and the beer has been ordered and it's about to come. The moment before the beer comes is a, is a moment of anticipation. Is that important? I'm not saying whether it's, it's positive or negative. Important. Is it important to understanding the experience? I would like to know after waiting. Sorry? Okay, so maybe it's a negative. I, I would not. Hmm? Actually, I like waiting. All I want to know is, is it important? Not is it important bad or important good, is it important? If I take that out, if I take the moment of anticipation, the waiting or waiting for the beer out, is the experience still the same? You feel more comfortable in a group of friends and strangers having had this beer. Yes. 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 Yeah. I don't watch you. You're, you're, you're saying <laughs> you, you're on a roll with the nose. <laughs> okay. So we could, you could say, for instance, that okay, we've got these uh, four four items here that are five completely useless. Why did we put them in there? Because they were part of the meaning. We didn't yet know if they were important. Perfect. Perfect. Exactly right. Part of this process you start to realize is just in wrestling with the meaning, you understand more about the experience. The fact that it's a, you consider it to be important or not important at this point is not important. But you've wrestled with it. You understand, you're beginning to understand this experience better by doing this process. So we can move all of those important things into this column, which we would do physically in using a, a spreadsheet. So we would then copy and paste those across, and, and these ones would uh, be left, left in there, but away from the positive ones. So let's have a look at each of these that made it into the important factors, and I'll ask the question, are they a physical or a metaphysical element of the experience? Physical meaning, is it about practical form, function, uh, features and benefits, that kind of thing? Is it a practical consideration? Is it something that makes me feel better? I feel emotionally better? Yeah? Like, would the beer make us fat or whatever? Pardon? Like, would the beer make us fat or whatever you're saying? Uh, that could be if you are concerned about being fat yeah. because of beer and that made you feel bad, then that would be a negative metaphysical thing. But if you are uh, on a diet and you're concerned about your calorie intake, that might be a practical consideration. Okay, here's your out clause. It can be both. Okay, it may have components of both. So let's do one. We are all in this together. Is that a practical or a metaphysical thing? Is it a psychical thing? Is it something that's about my mind, the way I think, or is it a practical consideration? Okay. Yeah. So I might, to deal with this, I might duplicate that and make that a P and an M. It's both physical and metaphysical. If you look at we are all this in this together, there's a communal feel about this, and there's also the fact that we're all sitting together in the tent. That's very practical. So it has two components. There's a meaning there that has, still has two components. That's fine. We have uh, beer makes us talk. Is that practical or is it more metaphysical? Is it more about the way I feel? Let's not go both every time, okay? <laughs> it's an easy bet. Beer helps us communicate better. Is that practical? Pardon? I give it a bit of both too. Yeah. Beer helps us to communicate better. I do communicate better and I feel better. And there's a practical component to that. Maybe I talk more confidently. But so then there's also a physical in the second one. The beer makes us talk. Oh. Because you are talking. 
Okay. Yeah. It, it, it aids conversation. Let's say it's yeah, practical component. It aids conversation. Otherwise, everyone's just sitting there quietly and, and no one's having fun. All right. Let's skip down to you feel more comfortable in a group of friends and strangers. Metaphysical. I think that's quite metaphysical. So out of that grouping, we have uh, perhaps we'll write these as PM and PM. If you are able, to, if you were, this is in a spreadsheet, if you were then sorted that spreadsheet and took that whole section and took the meanings, those that are important and those that were physical or metaphysical, and you sorted by the P or M or set, sort, sort by that, that column, you will get all of the meanings that are, of a, are important and of a physical nature or a metaphysical nature together. Can you see that? Yeah. That, how that would happen? So then we have clusters of physical and metaphysicals. But by the time you do this and this, you have thousands of pieces of meaning, literally. You will have, if you have a few hours of audio tape and video tape and so forth, you will have thousands of pieces of meaning. So you need these processes to be able to start to filter them down to what is important, or separate them out into metaphysical and physical. But even at this point, you will still have many, many hundreds, if not thousands, of pieces of meaning. So you need another layer to say, okay, of the physical, let's say the physical components of our meaning, how intense are they? How important, if you like, or intense, how, how, um, how impactful on the experience are they? So we look what we've said, we are all in this together, is a physical component. A physical, important, but physical component of meaning. How intense is that? On a scale of one to seven, one being low, seven being high. Five. Sorry? I got a five, I got a... Yeah, five, seven. Seven? Okay. Let's do the, the, the physical ones. Beer makes us talk physically. How intense is that? How important, how vital, how what, how much of the experience is that? Beer takes, makes us talk. Three, four. Mm -hmm. oh, four. Okay. Beer helps us communicate better. Although that's metaphysical, isn't it? We're getting metaphysical now. But beer helps us communicate better. I, One then. Well, I would. Six. Hey? In some ways it I got a one and a six. You might not uh, be understood the same way, and you might have a hard time. You are drink a lot of beers, so yeah. you be understood and communicate in that way. <laughs> so we're saying is that low or is that bad? <laughs> is that a good or bad? It's how you understand the word communication. That Let's say it's slow. Way. Let's say it's slow. In terms of uh, us being able to communicate, helps us com communicate better. I would think that physically, our communication skills. Would be, uh, an, it's not a, a highly intense part of that as a physical component. Metaphysical, let's have a quick look at that. Uh, we are all in this together, metaphysical side of that. Seven. 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 This one, uh, where are we? Yeah, beer makes us talk, metaphysically. Important? Five, let's make it five, okay. And uh, where are we? Uh, beer helps us to communicate better. The communication side of beer drinking, intensity. It, 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 six or seven, because you think there isn't. Okay, let's say it's, let's say it's pretty high. Uh, you feel more comfortable in a group, friends and strangers, metaphysical. Seven. I would have bet money on that. <laughs> okay, so again, we do the spreadsheet thing and we sort. If we sort all of that came before by this column, and then second sorting level is P or M, we get all of the important meanings, physical meanings, and the most intense things, uh, intense parts of that, 
at the top, so we end up with seven, sixes, fives, whatever, of physical important meaning. Can you see that happening? So we've got to a point where we can say, okay, the creme de la creme, the, the most in, intense physical important meanings within the experience of beer drinking, we can start to see them to cluster together. A couple more steps and we're almost there. So assuming that we've got our sevens, we, we can able to filter these and we get our physical sevens together. Let's say that they're all together there and these are all P's. So P's sevens. And we said we really just want to look at the physical sevens, sixes, maybe fives. Seven, sixes and fives. I could say, all right, I need, to, I need some way of clustering those together. They're all a group. I've got physical, important, intense, seven, sixes and fives but they're not all the same thing. Let's have a look at the physicals. We are all in this together. So they could say, for instance, that that's about togetherness. That was an M, so this is a beer makes us talk. That's a physical element. So it's about, what would that, what, what's a word we could use that talks about, makes or talks about beer making us talk? Communication. Communication. And that's one more. Uh, beer helps us to communicate better, so that, that would sit under communication. So we would also call that communication. Uh, let's do a couple of meaning, uh, metaphysical ones. Beer makes us talk metaphysical. Beer makes us talk in a metaphysical way is... Comfort. Sure. Comfort, yeah, that, all right. Let's say socially comfortable. Yeah, I mean, it makes me feel relaxed, or I can say relaxed. It's just a term that helps us to cluster these things together. So we would start to go through all of these, sorry, these meanings that are intense, physical, important meanings, and we would start to cluster them together. And our goal is to end up with four physical and four metaphysical, something along those lines something to that order, four or five headings that help us to cluster the, the, the meanings that are physical or metaphysical together. So we're looking at the two sides of the experience, the practical elements to it, and those things that are more metaphysical, psychical, and we want to know what are the most important parts of that. So we're starting to get a clearer picture of what, are, what is the components, the structures, the elements of meaning within this experience. The last thing you need to do then is to say, I've got, let's say, within two to togetherness in the physical com components, this is physical and it's togetherness, I might have 20 or 30 pieces of meaning that I've clustered under togetherness. I can then write a story about togetherness. Togetherness is, and I can write a story about that. In the experience of drinking beer with friends, an important physical component of this is about togetherness. And I use these pieces of meaning to string together a story that is the meaning behind the physical togetherness of drinking beer. So I can write a story about that. And if I've got eight stories, about the most intense, important, metaphysical and physical components of the experience, I got a fairly good picture of what's going on in the experience by this point. But that's not all. <laughs> There's no steak knives involved. By the time you get to this point, you can get a very clear picture of what's going on in the experience and you have a deep meaning of it and so forth and you, then you can start to and I won't go into step 10, which is no such thing as step 10, but it's really where we go into the sharing and showing how component, the XBD2, Experience Based Designing 2, where we start to share and show how we would communicate this understanding to somebody else in other forms. We have the stories, we've got the basis for our understanding, we can start to share that with other people, or we can even start to communicate back to the people we spoke to originally and say, did we get it right? 
We can share it to somebody else who may want to design something with this. We can begin to use it. The last thing I need to say is this. This is an interesting and useful process for understanding deeply the meaning within an experience. But the key, the key thing that it delivers as a process is called insight. Through the seeing process and through this laborious, tedious in engagement with the components and elements of meaning within the experience, you as a researcher will gain insight. And at the end of this point, you will understand very much what is the experience and the meaning within it. Thank you very much. Okay, I hope we enjoyed that exploration of uh, beer drinking in, uh, in Munich. Um, we understand the meaning of that a little bit better than we did before. So let's recap. We went through a nine step process. Step one was embodiment, understanding the experience that we want to have by having that experience. Step two, gathering information about the experience that be, might be via conversations with people, contextual studies or observations. Step three, we have to turn those observations into text. This is a hermeneutic process after all, so we have to be able to work with text. And we look at the meaning of text in step four. We explode that, that the text into its various parts and meanings. Step five, we have to then turn, well not all of that material is as important as the other. So step five is about what is important to the experience, not to me or anyone else, but to the experience itself. Step six, we go to metaphysical and physical components, we separate them out. Step seven, we then can begin to uh, apply at an intensity rating to those so we can understand the most intense physical and metaphysical components. Step eight, we are then categorizing, we start to bring things together into categories that enable us to start to see clumps of information of physical intensity and so forth. And then step nine, we begin to take those categories and develop stories around them so that we can communicate those to others so we can start to do something with them and do something powerful with them. We understand the meaning, we have the insight and we have the tools in which to do something with that. I hope you can find this useful. <laughs>